it looked like something was different. And so it, from a scientific point of view, uh, seemed clear that a lot could be learned if we could study these babies with the new tools. We couldn't study these babies and ignore their needs. Suddenly we had dozens and then more babies and, and then when we saw what we had to deal with, we, we asked for help. New York City in the 60s, uh, though not a rich city, uh, had a heart then the way it does now. And uh, Bellevue, that huge hospital, was a hospital that was there to serve people, <laughs> uh, whether they had any money or didn't. <laughs> so suddenly we had a clinic. We knew that if you could get kids in early infancy and you give them amplification and appropriate training, that you could alter their lives, and we saw that. So that's how I got involved in the early federal, early education statutes. And the patients came uh, where we were. And uh, part of my deal with moving was that they would give us adequate space for these programs. And, uh, that allowed us to serve these families for the next 25 years. Uh, so that's the long and short of the story. And what I know I learned from listening to those families. And now I'm sitting on a committee at PAHO to validate to, and certify that the Western Hemisphere will be free of measles and rubella, which is, is pretty exciting. To be able to work on your passion uh, and feel good about it, uh, to not have to apologize for what you do, what more could you ask for? <laughs>